Hey guys, Chris the Bull here from Esper Lux. Thank you for joining us for our second edition of our collector series videos that we're doing. Joining me today is Paul Blanford, my good friend from London, bringing together his incredible collection. And uh, we are feeling the heat, we're sweating. It's hot here in Geneva. Uh, we are broadcasting from the meeting room of the Erwork HQ, which we're super excited about. It's a really great space. If you guys haven't had a chance to come, if you're ever in Geneva, Come give it a come give it a shot and see the guys here, Paul. Cheers, great Chris. to see you, man. Good How are you? you? I'm good. I'm hot. I'm yeah, hot. All right. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna roll through this right now. Let's not waste time. Let's go for it. Paul, how did you get started on your watchmaking on your watch journey? Well, uh, it's been like twenty odd years now. Um, I started basically. Uh, I was a car geek before I was a watch geek, so I was on. Uh, on car forums, depending on whichever car I was uh, yeah, owning at the time. And uh, I spent a while on Piston Heads, which is a, a well-known forum in the UK. And uh, once I finished with whichever you know, model of car I was, I was looking at at the time, then I would switch and I'd just take a look and there was this like watches sub forum. And I was like, oh, you know, that's mm. kind of cool. Watches and cars go together. You know, basically you've got a little engine on the wrist. The rabbit hole, thing. the door. And then suddenly I was like, finding spending more time in this watch sub forum and then they referenced like an actual watch forum in the UK and I'd signed up to that and before I knew it like you say rabbit hole when I was down there and mm, deep end, yeah yeah I mean I so when I was 21 I got what I thought back then was the coolest watch in in you know in existence um, and I'm a huge Formula One fan and they just released the tag F1 Curium yeah and I was like Oh man, this thing, it's got like digital display and an analog display and you can you know, st start and count the laps and all this stuff. And I was like, this thing's epic. Still got that watch. It's worth a couple of hundred quid at maximum. If I'd have, I hated Rolex back then. If I'd have gone for like a Sea Dweller, 20 year old Sea Dweller. But sentimental know, value. Sentimental you know? value, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Nice, nice. So you've clearly taken, taken uh, the dive. And then you've gone even further by getting into independence. Yeah. How did that start? I think I did the standard thing of like, you go into watch forums, then you buy, you know, you build up your collection, you buy a few things, you trade a few things. I thought Rolex, was, then I thought Rolex was the best thing in the world. Mm. And I followed that, you know, that little curve you see on Instagram, which is, you know, buy all the Rolex, buy the vintage Rolex. And then suddenly you're like, there's a whole world of other stuff to discover. Yeah. And it started with MBNF. Um, basically, this particular watch here, uh, the HM9, um, it was just when I first saw this thing. I mean, it's got the car connection. This is the road version with the with the speedometer dial. Yeah. And I saw this thing when they launched it, and I was just like, "Wow, that is incredible!" And I'd never actually seen it in person. Um, in London, there were very few kind of independent watch shops that you could go to. We had Marcus on Bond Street. Yeah. And actually, earlier on, I'd seen an LM101, and I had a, a Pano Inverse at the time, and I was mm. like trying to figure out whether it made sense to, you know, sell the Pano Inverse and a few other bits and buy this LM101. And I, I just, I was wearing suits every day to work, and I, I just, I was like, I'm never going to wear that. Yeah. And then they launched this, and um, I was over in Dubai. And, uh, and I popped into the Mad Gallery and um, I, w I wasn't even wearing anything particularly exciting. I think I was wearing a Daytona, but it was a Zenith Daytona. And, yeah, uh, Primera Movement, sure. Yeah, El Primera Movement. And um, Komal, uh, the guy who just happened to be the guy who was in the, in the Mad Gallery at the time, he spotted that on my wrist and he was like, you know, it's not a standard Daytona. And so we struck up a conversation and I was like, oh yeah, you know, the HM9 is just epic. And so that was the first time I ever put an HM9 on my wrist. And uh, I, it, yeah, I just, I got a picture of me like in the mirror, just trying to check out. Cause this first, you see this thing, it's crazy, right? You so don't know it's, how it's, it's so going to wear, you don't like, it's not, Absolutely. Like, it, it's not like anything else you've ever seen. So you've got to try it on. I took this picture and that was in 2019, the, the year they launched it. And I was like, yeah, I have to, I have to own this one day. But the funny thing is actually that wasn't my first independent mm. because on that day in the, in the Mad Gallery, literally the night before they launched the Jean Boutique in Dubai Mall. Hmm. 
And Connell said to me, he was like, do you like Jean? And I was like, yeah, sure, I know of Jean, you know, yeah. interesting. And uh, he, gave me, um, he gave me a swag bag that they had left over from the Jean event. And in, in there, they had um, a picture, a framed picture of some of Francois Paul's sketches of his watches. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I've still got that and I've got it at home and it's up. But the weirdest thing is before I bought the HM9, I ended up buying a resonance, uh, not a 38 mil, not a brass, but a 40 mil yep. platinum, oh, yeah. first sure. series. Yeah. Um, white gold dial, which I still have, but Beautiful. I, didn't, I didn't bring it along because I brought the crazy stuff. That's, from, that's uh, okay. Yeah. And then I also bought a 38 mil Octoloon brass movement, Very nice. like yellow gold dial as well, before I even ended up with the HM9. So the craziest thing is I went into the mag gallery to, to look at the HM9 and ended up buying two, up buying two as, my, as my first yeah. independent pieces. It's funny how things work like yeah. that. Yeah. But this was always like on my mind and then I got to a stage where I was like, had a load of pieces in the collection that I just wasn't wearing. And I took that step and that leap and I was like, right, I'm just gonna consolidate now. And uh, there were a few pieces that it was a shame to let go. Like I had a 1973 uh, red sub, which was potentially unpolished. It was mm. like immaculate condition. It was really, really good. And so that was a wrench letting that go. But as soon as I got the HM9, Forgot it all made sense. Yeah. And this this watch, honestly, I mean, it, it is exactly what it says. It's a piece of art that just happens to tell the time, mm -hmm. right? And even over the pandemic, when you know I was working from home, to be honest, not necessarily putting a watch on my wrist, but I had this just sat in the little pod that it comes in, and it became like a desk clock for me. Sure. And yeah. Like, I would just look at it and smile. I, you know, that's one of the best things about not only this, but like the bulldog as well, for example. Like, you put the bulldog on, you can't help but smile. Yeah. They're incredible, incredible watches for me. And I, you know, I was like, okay, I've got the neurological machine. Now I need a legacy machine. Yeah. And I was thinking about the 101 because um, I knew it fit. Um, but it was just like, maybe I'm past that now. Maybe I've moved on and I need something a bit different and something a bit unusual. And I hate watches with dates. You look at these watches here, there's one over there with a date on it, right? Yeah, Everything right. else, no date. No date. Wow. But <laughs> when, when, when a brand makes when, it <laughs> so easy to wear a date. When, yeah. when they launched this, when they launched the Evo version, to be perfectly honest. Yes. I think the Evo version just elevates the, the standard you know, perpetual to a completely different level. I agree with you. And hearing Max talk about it being like literally a watch that you could wear, you know, all the time. All the time. Which is and, a scary thought. And and he did. And you know, I did I did the trial for the first month I owned this. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wear it day in, day out, all yeah. day every day for a month. And I did, and you could do, but I mean, we're, you know. Yeah. What's hey, collectors hey, and I, I've always said even the legacy, original legacy machine perpetual calendar, it's one of the top five watches I've ever held in my hand. I've held a lot of watches in my hand and that watch just is so beautiful. It's so well done. And then they come out with an Evo, which is like, just so hard to take off yeah. and, you know, reducing the bezel and all these things, you know, adding the water resistance and the shock absorbing ring to it. And all, all of a sudden, you're like, okay, this might be like a, you know, if there was one watch, you know, one watch to, to rule them all, like. It, it could well be it. It's, it's, it's pretty hot. Nice. It's, you gotta yeah, consider yeah. it, right? Absolutely. It's got the best of both worlds. I mean, it, they say that about the legacy machines anyway, you know, you've, you've got everything that a traditional watch collector would want. Yeah. And then they just elevate it to another level. For sure. And for me, yeah. Um, when they launched it, I was like, yeah, I really want it. And then I didn't have a green dial in the collection. Yeah. Whether this is green or blue, or depending on how the light hits it, it can be both. But yeah. and yeah, that's I the mean, and that's the titanium that's iridescent green correct uh, iridescent green dial version, which is uh, which is the one that they released after the initial three zirconium okay. pieces that, yeah. that they had. Put yeah. up. That's right. So 
this is limited by production, but not a limited edition. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. Which again, a brand that makes you know less than two hundred fifty watches a year, it's all going to be limited. It's so be limited more or less. Very cool. Okay. And then in between the purchase of the HM9 and the Evo, this arrived. Now, why did this arrive, Chris? I don't know. Do you want to tell the story? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? No. That was the crazy thing. Someone just got buying more teenies. So. <laughs> 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 so I've been looking at her work for a while, and I'd never, crazily, I'd never seen a 103 because, again, yeah. like, like I say, London is not really a, a place for, for indies right. um, in terms of being able to go and see them. Uh, and then we connected, yeah. uh, and you were coming to London, yeah. and you brought yep, this along. I had, I had mine, and that's I was, right. I was wearing the HM9, and, and we met in, in Dukes, which apparently, if, if Waco is anything to go by, is a, a, a regular haunt for, uh, Dangerous for, place. for, for watch collectors to yeah. visit in London. Uh, and we had the Vesper martinis, uh, you know, made in the James Bond style. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you wore the HM9 for the evening, and oh, I basically wore, wore that 103 for that's the evening. Right. Yeah. And that convinced me that I, I, I needed one. So mine's a slightly different version to yours. Yours is the 09, right? Mine is the 09. I think and you have the, the 03. 03. That's uh, right. A slightly different uh, configuration with the That's right. Stripes. With the wider, wider, narrower, wider, uh, narrower stripes that go all the way to the edges and then go all the way down uh, um, to, to the bottom of the case. But th I mean, this watch is, is uh, crazy, as you know extremely comfortable on the wrist despite yeah. the fact it's got quite a bit of heft to it that's right it's white gold it just sits really well i had to have a 103 because of the story behind it yeah. how effectively this watch saved the company right yes they almost went out i mean they were almost about to go out of business right love the story sketches on the table what was it two hundred thousand in the bank account and it was uh, like yeah you know, it was we, a little we, less we, than that we, i think we yeah. roll the dice either That's we right. do this or we don't do it yeah. and um and they did it and thank god they did because we yeah. wouldn't be sat here right no, now, that, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure, for sure. Can you believe that's a 20-year-old watch? I was just talking to Felix earlier today, and it's like 20 years, this design, honestly, this this watch, this uh, this way of telling time, and it's mind-blowing it's because ridiculous. it's aged so well. If, if it comes out today, it could be exactly. just as good. It looks, it looks like they could have released it today yeah. and that is testament to the design and oh it's just so incredibly cool with satellites and i think the only thing that dated it was the leather strap that they originally came yes, on that's and right. now switching it up you've got the baltimore so and the black it. on there i had the baltimore in black and then just saw the neon one when they when they launched it and i was like yeah i've got to get that and actually match it with the sneakers which is even sadder but but also in true in true or work signature true, colors too. exactly yeah, yeah yeah so i love that and um i came to watch some wonders earlier this year yeah um and i literally i'd just been to to the mad gallery to to pick up the uh, the evo and actually the, the mad one red and i bumped into Jacopo. And there was an Urwerk event that evening. Yeah. And I'd literally just landed from the airport. I was like, get, get well, the flight was delayed. I was like, let's get over, pick up the Evo, and, you know, and then I can get back to the hotel, freshen up, whatever, and then I'll go out for the Urwerk event. Because they were literally celebrating the, the, the 25th, the, the 25th, 25th anniversary. But also the launch of this place as a space That's for, right. you yeah. know, for, for, for people to come. But Jacopo being Jacopo, he was like, oh, bro. We got to go. Let's just go get some champagne. Let's go get some champagne, standard Jacopo style. So uh, you just drag me along here, and so I'm like, I'm like double wristing with the two new watches, not my own work, like to an work event. I'm like, oh my god. We, we went upstairs to the space upstairs, and I was chatting to Remy, um, and just saying exactly kind of like we just talked about the story behind the 103, why I love the piece so much, like yeah. I love the history behind it, and I was like, but there's one watch in your collection that I've only ever seen pictures of. I don't think I'll ever see it in person, let alone have the opportunity to buy one. And Remy's like, what is it? And I was like, it's the 105 T-Rex. Hmm. And then Remy, it was one of those like, hold my beer moments. <laughs> I, it, 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 was, it wasn't, it, it was Remy, it was champagne, whatever. It was hold my champagne. So I'm holding a champagne, Remy goes off to the safe and he comes back and he hands me this. Hmm. The 105 T-Rex. And honestly, I have no idea what I said for the next five or 10 minutes, <laughs> but I literally, I had this thing on my wrist and just the biggest grin on my face. Yeah. 
Um, and one of the watch collectors from uh, from from um, Emirates Watch Club, um, Malek, he he did a he did a picture of it on my wrist and posted it to Instagram, and I and I reposted it like this thing is epic. And I'd spoken to Felix earlier on in the evening and Martin as well, and they know how much I love the brand and the history behind it. Anyway, Remy dropped me a message after he'd seen me post this on Instagram, and he was just like, Paul, I, I've spoken to Martin and Felix, and they know how much, you know, you love the brand and this particular, you know, this, this particular model. And we're well, we're willing to let, to sell you <laughs> the, the museum piece that they have. So this is Erwerk's Erwerk. That, that's pretty cool. Not only that, this is the prototype. So that's pretty awesome. They only made 22. Well, actually, they made 23 because this is, instead that's of being a numbered one of 22, this is hashtag zero one on the back. Very so awesome. The fact that they allowed me as a collector the opportunity to buy this piece yeah, is, it can't turn that down. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. They put it on the new Kiska strap, which I mean, I just think might like, be one of the best rubber straps in the business. It's yeah, I mean, so comfortable, yeah, and I love matches. that. I love that you can put that on the one hundred and five, the two hundred and twenty, the one hundred and ten, also. Yeah, yeah, and it it just matches the look of the watch so well. Like even when you go into the detail, and like oh, I just it just yeah. fits so well. And the craziest thing was I came to collect that earlier on this year between Watch Some Wonders and obviously coming over for Geneva Watch Days. And just to complete the story of craziness, um, I came in back here and uh, Remy said, oh, sorry, Paul, it's a bit busy. We're doing some filming. So they're filming for the 25th anniversary. And I'm like, oh, okay, no worries. So we went out, we grabbed some lunch, had some champagne as one does, <laughs> came back in and they, there was a break in filming. And who comes bounding downstairs? Marco, Swiss watch guy. Nah. So he <laughs> jumps on me, gives me a big hug. He's like, bro, what are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, I come to collect the, the T-Rex. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. And so like, I do a wrist, he's like, let's do a professional wrist roll. So we did a wrist roll. And then Felix came downstairs, gave me a hug. He's like, Paul, it's so good that we, you know, that we've managed to make this happen. That's, yeah. that's great stuff. And he's like, actually, we're doing some filming. Do you want to do a piece to camera about the watch? And yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. And so he was like, yeah, come back in a couple of hours. So I went off. Um, some more champagne. Other, some, some, <laughs> saw some other guys. And uh, came back and he's like, yeah, Waco's filming. So the pieces that they're showing now for the 25th anniversary sure, yeah. of Waco doing is... Hi, I'm Waco, a watch enthusiast and a watch collector. And this is the work, blah, 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 blah. So he was doing all of this. And I'm sat behind the camera drinking champagne next to Felix. Having done my piece of the camera for this, like for the 105, it was, if you could imagine a better day as a watch yeah. geek, watch collector, I, I've yet to experience yeah. it. Yeah, it I get was it. epic. So, I mean, that piece will stay in my collection forever. That's so, fantastic. I'm not sure Yasin wants to hear that because she was unhappy about the fact that I took it <laughs> from their collection, but she knows it's with a good, uh, you know, in a good home. Yeah. So... Awesome. Well, that's a, I guess that's a great story considering that we're also, we're also shooting from, from our works HQ. Okay. So we're going to transition to something a little bit more, uh, story related. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, there'll be the last piece that I kind of want to just talk about a little briefly here. So talk to us about you were, you were about to tell me the story about, I was. about this watch. And then so, I said, hang on, save it. Let's save it for the camera. Yeah. So this piece here, um, it's actually got my name on the dial. It says Blanford SA. Blanford SA is Blanford Subaqua. It's a dive equipment manufacturer who back in the 70s partnered with a number of brands to co-brand dials. So I've got a couple of uh, vintage 70s Squalies, which are the same case as they used for the 50 Fathoms back in the day when they were producing those. And um, yeah, during my nights of random eBay watch Googling or whatever, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll stick my surname we, we in. All know, I, I, we all know, know those, I'm yeah. sure most of us have probably done sure. that just to see what pops up. And I was like, wow. Yeah. So I picked up a couple of those, but th this piece in particular, I have never seen a chronograph Blanford. And when this popped up on eBay, it was just the 
dial and the movement. And it's a, it's a Valju 7734, used in all of the vintage chronos of, of the 70s, late 70s kind of era. And I was like, we'll have to rescue it. Because it was being sold like for parts, basically. Someone uh, was going to break scrap. this thing, probably throw the dial away, like, and just rescue whatever parts they could from the Valju movement and, and use it to repair something or other else. I was like, I'm not letting this happen. So I put in what was probably a ridiculously crazy bid to make sure I won, won, you know, won the dial in the movement. And then, you know, standard eBay stuff where you just sit there and you just wait and see what you've won. Hmm. And it came through and the dial itself actually was in incredible condition. I've not had anything done to the dial. Hmm. So I had the movement serviced and then I, I, I've seen uh, a, a similar, very similar dial uh, without the bland for branding. And it's in like a cushion case. And I didn't, no. like, as soon as you look at that, the first thing I think is it's, uh, it's like the Tudor Heritage Chrono of the 70s, the original. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sure if it's a value movement, I can source some form of generic case for a watchmaker to put the, you know, to put the movement in. Sure, yeah. And then I've got effectively a 70s style, you know, Monte Carlo Tudor type-esque thing, but with my name on the dial, so I did that, got it all put together, movement serviced, and for less than a thousand pounds, I've got a vintage chrono with my name on it. With name on it. That's pretty cool. It's not always the high-end stuff that makes you smile. And it doesn't, it doesn't need to be. So lastly, this is a recent pickup. It's a recent Something pickup. I haven't had a chance to look at yep. yet. Uh, this is a, a made by a Magnum. And this is the Madar, and this is the third uh, watch he's, he's ever made. But this, for me, is, um, is is the most unusual to date. Because I say to date because I'm meeting him tomorrow to see his next latest mm, crazy creation, okay. which is going to be even more crazy, I think. But this is um, obviously slightly unique design. Uh, but what makes it even more unique is you can actually move the position of the entire watch as it sits on your wrist so that it can face any direction um, and then back to uh, you know back to your standard sitting on your wrist Very cool. normal it's got a solita jump hour movement inside so again like you say affordable independent watch sure. making if you're looking for something for like three four thousand euros I mean, and you want something unusual and independent. Out this of the guy box. is, he does some great stuff. And Pretty cool. I can't wait to see what he's got coming for the, for the next one. So what's on the wish list? Like, what are you, <laughs> where's your grail? Where are you, you know, what are you thinking? You know, what well, do you know what this, the, the H and nine. That's how, I mean, it's, it, you it, kind of started with the grail, it, right? It, yeah. I mean, I, it, you know, I went into, I went into MBNF with a bang and, and to be perfectly honest, um, this is, and, and, and always will be, I think, my grail of grails. Um, but what else am I looking to add to the collection? I feel like I need a Grubel in there somewhere. Um, I saw the Carbon Balancier in uh, nice. at, at Dubai Watch Week, the one that they did, I think, 11 pieces of for yeah, the- I recently sold one of those. Of oh, course you did. It was honestly- it was, <laughs> Sadly, not to me. It was super impressive. Um, super impressive. Yeah, the Carbon kind of changes Oh, it changes the uh, the whole look of the watch, yeah. and it just sat so comfortably on the yeah, wrist. Agree. And you know, I feel like that's something you can wear just about in London. And yeah. you know, I can't wear the Nautilus, the, the AP anymore. And it's tough to do that, especially in London like, right now. London's it's a not scary. a safe place to do that. So I feel like hopefully you could, at least for the recent future, you could probably wear a Grubel. So that would be nice. I missed out years ago on a, a Baby Nadal uh, oh, yeah, RM, you know, at, I think it was like 80 and now what are they, something ridiculous. I don't know, it was a 350, yeah, something I was like that. Three, I, three, 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 I, I, I stopped looking at exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> and again, yeah. you can't wear them in London, so it would be a very expensive also, watch to wear around the house. Yeah. I've seen some some more crazy stuff from from both of these these two brands here that, that I know is coming that we can't talk about. Right, but, um, yeah. Is also very interesting. And of course, you own the piece that from Dubai Watch Week, uh, from my top five of Dubai Watch Week that I desperately want. Which one is that? AK06. Oh yeah, well, that's... I, I mean, you know, every time I'm here, I see Recep. I've been drinking with Recep, which is a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> but uh, none of that matters, because no. <laughs> when, when Recep decides I'm allowed to have an Acruvia, I'll have an Acruvia, hopefully, one day. Um, yeah. It won't be the 06, obviously, because they're all done, but... 
for me personally, the Acrivia range rather than the CCs, um, like it's more my kind of watch from, yeah. I think probably what you know of me and what you know of my it's what attra- It's what attracted me to the brand. I mean, the CC wasn't out when, when Em and I started working together. So I am with you. We're in the same boat when we, when we think about the AK series. Yeah, everybody's got different tastes and that's what makes this this hobby and this passion so so great absolutely you know yeah. we're able to diversify a lot of people look at this stuff and think they'd never do it but the thing is i urge did people, you think you would do it way well, back when probably not but this is it i urge people to if they can to actually try them on yeah because that's the thing when you put something like this on your wrist you realize that actually you know lug to lug it's a sensible size very it fits yeah. like a you know like a decent what should and, and they're not that crazy and obviously thank you for meeting me and let me try the 103 because that's what's you know led me to into into I the, hate, into hate, the hey man i just only share my passion what i love so this was a watch for me this is i love this watch this was the very first true independent that i bought for myself so our work is has a very special place in my heart for it such a great so, team as well yeah, they're great but i completely forgot that i've ordered the db28 xp star yeah. sky <laughs> yeah, yeah they're very cool people. Piece. Yeah, a very cool piece. How did I forget that? Yeah, the heat. <laughs> the heat, the heat, the heat on, and the humidity. On, on that note, yeah, we're gonna go and cool off and <laughs> maybe grab a couple of cold ones. So, <laughs> Paul, this was Cheers awesome. Thank, thank you. you, appreciate it. This was fantastic, guys. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. See you next time. Cheers.